Steve Buzzheads. Welcome to the second episode of That Buzz Guy podcast. I am Curtis Tucker, aka That Buzz Guy, right here on your podcast and on the YouTube channel, Curtis Tucker TV. You can catch me there if you'd like to check out the video part of this. And like I said, this is going to be episode number two. I probably will not tell you every episode what number I'm on, but kind of a milestone with uh, episode number two. We're going to kind of continue to get you guys ready to start your own side gig. That's what a lot of this podcast is going to be about. Uh, me trying to describe to you guys how to get things going, how I've got things going, and uh, some other things like that. So I'm going to give tips on that, branding, marketing, advertising, all that good stuff. And so tonight's episode, we're just going to jump right into it, is about what kind of uh, business, side gig, side hustle, what kind of uh, thing do you want to do? And I hear a lot of people talking about fear and hear a lot of interviews where the uh, commentators are always saying how uh, people don't get started because they're afraid. They're scared of what people are going to think. They're afraid of what people are going to say about their voice or, or their video. But, you know, I think the number one reason a lot of people don't start a side business, a side gig, is because they just don't know what to do. Number one, they don't know what idea to come up with. And then kind of if they do have an idea, they just don't know how to get started. And so what I want to help you guys do is narrow down what you want to do. And then once you guys have decided uh, what you want to do, then I want to be able to teach you guys how to get started. So the main takeaway from tonight's, today, this morning's episode is no matter what, tomorrow you've got to get started. So everything that I'm going to tell you on this podcast uh, I'm going to end it or somewhere in here. I'm going to tell you how you guys can get started tomorrow. I, you got to get started tomorrow. So even if you don't have an idea yet, uh, you've got plenty of time to come up with an idea. It doesn't matter what you get started with. Just as long as you get started, you can't pivot. You can't think of ideas. You can't figure things out. You can't experiment if you don't get started. You just you're you're just stuck, and there's just nothing to. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to get better. There's nowhere to learn. There's just nothing to do if you just sit there and talk about it and think about it all the time. So, uh, and that brings up a, a good phrase that uh, one of my best friends, his dad, used to always tell us when we were in high school. We would tell him that we wanted to do something, and he would always tell us, there's talkers and there's doers. And so, you know, if you've been talking about having a side gig for a year, for six months, for 10 years, you know, it's time to quit talking. Let's, uh, let's get busy. So... Um, you know, I'm going to have, uh, on tonight's episode, I'm going to give you guys about 10 different questions that you guys can ask yourself. And hopefully at least one of those questions is going to be able to narrow down kind of an idea for what you might want to do. But again, don't, uh, let, you know, uh, if, if you, if you rack your brain for an hour or two hours trying to come up with an idea, it does, you know, then just, and you can't think of one. Don't let that stop you tomorrow. And I do mean tomorrow, you need to get busy and get started on something. And um, what I also want to say is like, let's say tomorrow you start a podcast and um, you commit to two months where you're just going to try to figure things out. And in that two months, and let's say one month down the line, you kind of figure out, you know, I'm not real comfortable or I, I don't like my voice or I, I just, I'm not enthused about doing podcasts. Well, then you've, see, you've taken a month and maybe you feel like you've failed or you haven't gone somewhere, but no, what you've learned is you don't want to podcast. And so then you go to the blog and then you try blog and you try writing. If that doesn't work, then you go to video. If that doesn't work, then you go to creating a product, you know, so there's, or a service. So there's a whole bunch of different routes that you can go, but you're not going to be able to find out which one it is that you like the best, that you can do the best until you get started. And so uh, tomorrow I want you guys to get started and I'm going to give you guys some quick different ways that you can get started with either a podcast, a blog, or on a video. And it's all absolutely free. You don't have to have uh, really no other equipment <clears throat> other than a phone. You are going to have to probably at least have a phone or a computer. 
probably going to say you're going to need a phone, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, I am looking, so there is a companion blog to this podcast, so uh, it's probably not going to be as rambling. Uh, it's not going to have every detail that I've got here on the podcast, but if you want to go to thatbuzzguy.com and look for the episode, uh, it's called, or the blog post called, What Kind of Business or Side Gig Should You Start? Uh, you can go there and get those 10 questions. You guys can print those off or answer them there. And uh, if you don't like listening to podcasts or you don't have time, uh, just be sure and go there to the blog and just read it there. So, Or um, if you like visual stuff uh, and you're listening to this on podcast, but you'd rather maybe watch a video. And in the videos, I just kind of sit here and talk. So uh, I don't want to give you guys too many um, you know, visuals because the people on the podcast won't be able to hear them or see them. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm kind of reading off some of my notes on my mini iPad, but, uh, that way it corresponds a little more with the video, the blog and the podcast. So you guys get to choose. So, so right there, um, look what I'm doing. I'm, so what I decided to do was I'm going to video, which I call a vodcast. I'm vodcasting, which means I've got the video. So what I'm going to do is try to teach you guys how to, you know, learn how to start a side gig. So that's my idea. I'm not only videoing it, but then when I put the video, I'll put the, uh, the intro song and the exit song, outro, on and then that will be my video which i'll upload to youtube but then i will rip the audio out of it and that'll be my audio that i will upload to um right now i'm using buzzsprout i will up that upload that to buzzsprout that will be my podcast and then like i said i've already written just so i can just so i'll have i had some ideas for the show and i'm i'm not sitting here rambling which i am rambling um you guys let me know if i ramble too much um and use the use the email buzz at buzzheadmedia.com right now I'll probably change that eventually but uh anyway these notes are hopefully going to keep me from rattling or uh, rambling uh too much so so anyway what i'm doing is thinking of an idea writing a blog post, that's the written part, that I'm videoing it, ripping the audio, uploading the audio, and that's a podcast. So I get three different uh, platforms out of one piece of, you know, one 45-minute to one-hour talk. So um, that's an idea for you guys. And then what you can do is you can chop that. Uh, let's say it turns out to be a 50-minute video. You can chop, you know, if I come up with, like, you know, on my 10 questions, maybe I take one of those questions and I cut out the question and it's like 45 seconds. Well, you can use that on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter. And uh, so you can break that apart and have a whole lot more content. So basically what you're wanting to do, uh, and this is specifically for creating an online business, is you're just wanting to create content. You're wanting to entertain people or you're wanting to teach them something. And that's really when they're going to follow you, if, if you're entertaining them or you're teaching them something. And so um, putting out as much content as you can, the secret to that is staying consistent and giving them something that is informational and worth listening to. So if you guys can do that, I promise you, you're going to make money. There's almost no way to not make money. But again, there's two secrets. You got to get started, meaning tomorrow, and you got to stay consistent, meaning once you get going, don't stop. So if you're going to do a a podcast and you say you're going to do it once a week, then do it once a week. If you're going to do a blog and you're going to update it twice a week, update it twice a week and don't stop. So um, I could give you examples of the things that I've done over the last 20 years that basically once I started, you know, I just kept going. Now, there were some things that I started. Um, my deal is I usually don't just have one side gig going. I've usually got you know, three to five. And so some of them I do stop. I'm not consistent on, and then they don't work out or, you know, they make money in the short term and then they maybe get, you know, too involved. And I'm to the point where I'm spending too much time on those and maybe not another one that I want to do. And so, you know, sometimes I stop those, but uh, that's just by choice. So, but if I were to stay consistent with all of those, they would all grow. And I assure you, I would make money with all of them. So um, I'm going to give you guys just real quick. And what I'll probably do is repeat it at the end. 
but um, so so to start a blog, let's say you don't want to go full into it right now because you're not sure what you're going to do, but you know, eventually on an episode, I'm going to suggest to you guys to go and get a WordPress hosted website and you're going to put a theme on that and you're going to use WordPress. But for now, if you, and that, but that's going to cost you a couple bucks a month in hosting fees, uh, not real expensive, but if you want to do everything completely free, I would say go to something like blogger.com or tumblr.com and you can start a blog there and you Whatever you do, these three choices I'm going to give you, you're going to start tomorrow and you're going to upload these to the internet. Now, the thing is, what you guys got to understand is just because you put these on the internet doesn't mean anybody's going to see them, hear them, or read them. So don't worry about that. You're going to have time to perfect these, but I don't want you to just have these at home. I want these, you got to put them out there. And so you start to get that feeling that, hey, somebody could be reading this. So, but. I promise you in the beginning, they not necessarily are going to be. So anyway, go to blogger.com or uh, tumblr.com and you can start your own little blog and that'll kind of get you guys. So commit to, let's say you're going to commit to two episodes or two blog posts a week and you're going to commit to three months or let's, you know, whatever you guys pick. That's going to be what you're going to commit to in the beginning. And then at the end of that, you can kind of reevaluate and say, okay, I really like that. That's what I wanted to do. And then you're, then maybe you're going to think, wow, there was a couple of topics that I, you know, I wrote myself that I was kind of interested in that may help you guys in your direction. And also then, you know, after you do a couple of episodes or posts or whatever, or videos, you know, maybe have your friends and family take a look at it and uh, maybe they can give you guys some encouragement or some ideas. So, so that's how to start a blog. Now, if you want to start a podcast, you do not need expensive equipment. You don't need a microphone. You don't need a mixer, any of that good stuff. Just on your phone, download the app called Anchor. Basically, put in your email address and a password, and you are signed up for Anchor. And basically, you you click record, and it just starts recording you. And uh, and then it actually even upload it, it. I think you could probably turn it on or off, but it will upload your podcast to like iTunes and things like that. So, but I think you can tell it not to in the beginning. But anyway, that's going to give you guys the practice of. Getting your voice out there. What does your voice sound like? How many ums, ands you're saying? And don't worry about that. You're going to get better as you go along. But listen to what your voice sounds like. See if it's fun. See if that's something you want to be interested in. Absolutely free. So anchor for a podcast. And then, you know, just real easy if you want to try the vodcast or the video channel. Uh, just turn on your phone, video yourself. You, uh, I, I would suggest putting the video on a stand. I've got a little GoPro stand that uh, my video. So, so basically what I'm doing right now is really simple. I've got an uh, iPhone sitting on a GoPro stand on my desk. I've got a, a micro, uh, just a little cheap, cheesy microphone plugged in. And I've got it kind of hooked here to my uh, uh uh, the, the blue, the, 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 what do you call this thing? Um, I've forgotten what, uh, um, what you call my microphone, a, um, Yeti, golly, my memory is gone. So, so I've got a Yeti here, but, and it looks like I'm recording, talking into my Yeti blue microphone, but I'm not, I've got this cheesy little microphone just stuck up underneath the foam. So it looks like I'm talking on, but I'm not. It's just a, it, it could. And then last week, if you guys remember, I just used the um, AirPods. Why can't I remember what to call them? AirPods from your iPhone, the microphone. I just talked in it. This this week, I thought I would try this uh, microphone that I use. And like I say, it's just a little, you know, probably $25 little itty bitty microphone. But you guys don't even have to use a microphone. You can just turn on your video, video yourself. But I want you to uh, start a YouTube channel and upload that video. And that way you're going to be able to see what it looks like on the Internet, see what it looks like on a phone, you know, record it, then go back and look at it. What does it sound like? What does it look like? Of course, the sound, if you don't use any type of a microphone and you're any distance away from the the your camera it, you know the sound's not going to be very good quality at all if you're in a room that has a lot of uh, reverb in it you know it's going to sound kind of reverby so um you know there are a lot of cheap microphones out there that you can literally just plug right into your phone so I, you might lapel mics 
um, you might look into that, but you do not need a big mix. You know, me and my buddy, we do, we've, we've got the mixer and we've got the microphones and we've got all that stuff, but I decided to try to do this podcast, vodcast, you know, just on, on the fly as cheap as I can. So, um, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully this sounds good. Uh, it should sound slightly a little bit different than last week because, uh, trying out this different microphone, you guys, please let me know. Does it sound good enough? Um, you know, for a podcast again, what I'm trying to get you guys to do is to not have an excuse. I don't want anybody out there saying, well, I don't want to get started because I don't have the right microphone. I don't have the right this. I don't have the right that it, it just gets started you know, do five episodes with crappy equipment. And then as you get better, you can buy new equipment or you can upgrade or you can figure out what you need, but just get started. And so, um, so how do you come up with an idea? You know, I've come up with a a bunch of ideas. You know, I actually got started on the internet and making money online. I've been doing it for 20 years and it was almost literally, it was kind of by accident. I didn't even, I didn't even know really what the internet was or what it could do or or it's going to go. Basically what I had decided to do was become a cartoonist. And the only way I could think of to make money quickly with cartoons was to draw single panel cartoons and send them off to magazines. Well, that was taking a lot of time mailing, waiting for them to be returned. And then usually when they were returned, they were rejected and had a bunch of different batches going to different uh, magazines at one time, a lot of mailing, a lot of trips to the post office. So, um, you know, I noticed that websites, this was like around 1999, and I noticed that websites had gotten really popular. And so I thought, well, what if I throw my cartoons on a website and I email these editors, magazine editors, well, they'll get online, look at my cartoons, and I'll just sell them from my website uh, and it was really a you know naive of me, but I thought I was creating something new. But anyway, that's what got me on the internet. I so I had a guy that was going to build a website for me, and he couldn't build the website, so I built it myself, which meant I learned using this really clunky software. But I started to learn HTML, and I built my own website. And, you know, and then I've, I'll go more into that depth on those stories. But anyway, so um, so sometimes you just get on and 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 so so that morphed into me starting a cartoon logo design business, which morphed into a Google AdSense business, which morphed into a community media company. And so a lot of pivots there. So you never know where you're going to end up or where you're going to go online or with these uh, little side gigs. But the thing is, if you don't get started, you're not going to go anywhere. You don't know where it's going to pivot or what you're going to like. So anyway, so that's, I didn't have a question. I didn't need, I wasn't looking to start a business online. I literally wasn't. I just I was looking for a way of getting cartoons online so people would buy them so I didn't have to mail things. So, you know, so anyway, um, but if but I want you guys to to do an online business. So here's some questions. So question number one, what do you like to talk about? So think about when you go to a party and uh, you see one of your buddies there and maybe you only talk to him every time you're at one of these parties. Well, when you guys get together, what do you guys talk about? What do you really like to talk about? Once you start talking, what can you talk about for 20 minutes without, you know, without even catching a breath? You know, so think about that. And that might be something that you want to, uh, you know, build a business around or a side gig. So it could be maybe a hobby that you have. It could be a sports team that you really like. It could be uh, if you're fascinated by ghost stories. Um, like I said, uh, if you're if there's a model, a car, or different aspects of a car that you like, um, that could be an idea. Um, do you enjoy reviewing movies or gadgets or things like that? Uh, when I get together with people, I like to talk about the internet. I like to talk about how to market and how to make money online. So it just fits that uh, that's what I would podcast about. So it fits me perfect. Second question, are you an expert in anything? So so let's say, you know, you uh, you were in the landscaping business for 20 years and then you quit that job and you went into retail and you really hated retail. And so now you're at the point where you want to start your own side gig, which is either a podcast blog or a video channel. Well, if you've got a whole bunch of uh, expertise in uh, landscaping, maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe you want to get on there and, and talk about 
you know, the different things that you can do to your lawn and, and trees and the flowers to plant and how to make the grass grow and, and different things like that. So because you have you have expertise in something, maybe um, that's something that you can start a business or a side gig around. So think about that. Um, you know, if we went to college and you have a degree in something and uh, you haven't really used it because you, you didn't want to get into that field, well, maybe you don't have to get into that field, but maybe just talking about being in that field, you can start a business business around. So think about what you are an expert in. Um, number three, can you solve a problem? So maybe you have uh, created something uh, that solves somebody's problem. That would be something to start a business around. Now, maybe not so much just a strictly blog, podcast, or video channel, but maybe you create a product. Maybe you've heard of a problem and uh, out of necessity, you created a one-off item for yourself because it solved the problem for you. Well, talk to your friends and your family, and if people start asking you and saying, hey, I want one of those, well, you may have a business idea right there. And again, you can use blogging, podcasting, and video to help promote, market, and advertise whatever product you do. But maybe that's something you're solving a problem. Or, or you know, even you could solve a problem. Maybe you know a lot of people that get in financial trouble and so you help solve their problem of you know how to do your finances how to save money how to file your taxes correctly how to invest you know things like that so those are those are things that you can do to um, you know solve somebody's problem number four do you live a niche lifestyle now this is the one that I would really like to do so if I lived uh, on a beach, let's say I ran a surf shop on a beach, I would podcast about the surf life all the time. I mean, I'd be talking about how to surf, you know, the fun things you can do in the water, what to do in the sand, the different foods and drinks and weather. And, you know, so do you have a lifestyle? Are you a, uh, you know, a outdoors person? Maybe you want to start a blog on, you know, living outdoors or, or going on long hikes or climbing mountains, you know. So if there's kind of a lifestyle, uh, you know, camping, surfing, eating, being vegan, um, growing organic foods, homeschooling, being a photographer, there's all kinds of lifestyle um, that you can talk about. But uh, that really lends really well for a podcast or a video channel and especially merchandise. So, so once you start your blog or your podcast, you, you're eventually going to want to start creating your own merchandise. And so that would be t-shirts, hats, uh, all types of clothing thing, you know, anything related to whatever the subject you're doing. So that's another avenue of making money, not only on subscriptions or the advertising, but the merchandise. Um, and then this one kind of ties in a little bit. Uh, is there anything that you can teach? So is there something that you know, like hopefully I can teach you guys how to start a podcast or a blog or a video channel and how to market a little better, how to brand yourself? You know, is there something that you guys can teach? So, um, you know, can you teach people how to, um, you know, save money, how to declutter their house, how to work on car engines, you know, anything like that. So think about maybe is there something out there that uh, you think you guys can teach people? Uh, that would be a really great idea on starting a side gig. And then also just a reminder, don't be afraid to start multiple uh, things. Like I said, I start multiple gigs all of the time, you know, and make sure I've got a main one at least one main one that's making enough money that I'm paying my bills and uh, then I might start another side one just to try things out but you don't want you know the the second or the third one to take up a lot of time on the one that's making the money but you know if you can kind of automate a first side gig that gives you time for a second and a third and uh, you know experiment if it fails quit and go to the next you know it's it's no big failure is there is no failure there's only learning you you learn that that didn't work you learn that that's not something you are interested in doing so don't ever look at anything um, as a failure but look at it as you know an opportunity that I found out that that's not the direction that I wanted to go so um, so teaching number five how about have you uh, ever wanted to learn something? So this is flipping it. Number six, what if you wanted to learn something? Well, how can you do that? Well, 
you go on a journey and basically what you do is you document yourself. So let's say you want to learn how to do a triathlon. And so you blog about that and you blog about what your training is, what you're eating, you know, the equipment, the, the shoes, the bike, uh, all that stuff. And then you document every time that you go and you train and then you document when you go to the triathlons. And so there's a lot of documenting, especially with video. And uh, so is there something out there that you've always wanted to learn? And if so, turn that into kind of a mini documentary and uh, people that uh, want to learn the same thing. They're going to follow you because they want to know what you're doing, what's working, what's not working. Um, even something as simple as social media. Do you uh, want to learn social media? Um, you know, go through and, and show people how you're learning, you know, how to look at stats and how to place Facebook ads and, and stuff like that. So basically, while you're learning, while you're documenting yourself learning, you're, you're teaching your audience you know, how to do the same thing. So uh, that's always kind of a cool one. And that's kind of where the trend is right now is instead of um, just creating content that's in your face and, and do this, do this, do this, some people are just documenting themselves, which is a lot easier. There's not, there's no, so like right now I'm doing this podcast and I don't have a script, but I've got a blog post that, you know, has numbered points on it that I can look at and that helps me get through this podcast. But if I was documenting, you know, maybe building a WordPress website, I might just have a camera on me and, you know, I might be talking to myself and maybe look at the camera every now and then, but I would be learning how to build that WordPress website. And as I was doing it, I would be kind of telling you guys how that was going. So number six, uh, Figure out if there's anything you've ever wanted to learn. Number seven, is there a business you know you could do better? So that's always a good one. So if you're living in a town and, uh, you know, let's go back to the lawn guy. You know, maybe your town only has a couple of lawn guys and, you know, one of the guys that's making a lot of money just isn't very good at it. He never... He never trims anything very good. When he's done, he doesn't sweep up the grass. You know, there's just a lot of stuff that, that you see somebody's not doing, and you're like, you know, I could do that much better. Uh, could be a restaurant. Maybe somebody's not, you know, you, people aren't looking at the details and, and all that. So look at different businesses that maybe there's a uh, business or a product or a service out there that you think you could do better. Uh, if you could even do it 10, 20, 30 percent better, you could probably corner the market. And, uh, you know, I, I, you don't want to go into things on on purpose, putting people out of business, but you can usually snag a large portion of the market if you can do things, you know, a little better. So um, other things, you know, a real estate agent, an artist, a musician, a cook, a coach, you know, just look at things that maybe you know enough about your competition that you're like, yeah, I could do that a lot better. So that would be an idea for a side gig. Number eight, can you purchase an existing business? So that's always an idea. You know, is there a dry cleaning company out there that is trying to sell or, you know, is struggling? Is there a insurance agency that's getting ready to, you know, turn over and, and try to sell to somebody. So look, um, or even websites, uh, look at podcast, you know, you, if there's something out there that you kind of like that you might be interested in, you might just hit the owner up and say, Hey, you know, I want to get into that by chance. Would you be, you know, getting close to or want to sell that and, you know, maybe make them an offer. So purchasing an existing business is always a really quick way, especially if they've already got a, uh, like an email list or a following, or if it's a brick and mortar business, if they've already got a lot of customers, uh, you don't, you know, have to start from square one. So buying an existing business or service or website, a lot of people buy websites, you know, there could be a website out there that's doing, you know, something like, let's say it's, it's reviewing cameras and maybe they're not doing it real well, but uh, they've built up enough, you know, they're kind of high in the rankings, uh, not super high, but let's say they're at number, you know, nine on page one, you know, maybe you could buy that website from somebody and take it to number two on page one, do better reviews, longer reviews, more in depth, you know, some videos, things like that. So anyway, so look into, purchasing an existing business. Number nine, is there a need 
in your town or or online. So so look into that. You know, if you're if you're looking around and and you know that uh, you know, like let's say in my hometown, there's nowhere to buy baby toys or baby furniture, or baby clothes. Well, you know, you might want to start a baby. Um, you know, business. And then, you know, if you don't want to do a brick and mortar. So one time I started a, I had two kids, they were babies at one time. And so when I had them, they were babies. I started an online baby store and I sold baby furniture, cribs, strollers. I didn't carry anything. I had no inventory. I didn't drop ship. Basically it was all affiliate links. So I built a complete online baby store using affiliate links to other stores. And so, but, but look where there might be a, uh, a need, you know, is there a dog walking service or a dog sitting service in your town? If there's not, there's an opportunity. Uh, ask around, ask your friends, family, different business owners, say, hey, have, you know, is there maybe, I know that uh, in a lot of towns, there's not a really good web design service. And, you know, when I'm talking about that, I mean, like reliable. So sometimes it's hard to find, and, and I'm guilty, uh, sometimes it's hard to find a web designer that's really reliable, you know, that says, okay, I can get on this and I'll have it done in a week. And they actually get it done in a week. So look for where there might be a need in your town. And the more you can niche that down, uh, the better, you know, you're going to be and the quicker you're going to get a following. So Number 10, is there an idea that you'd like to copy? So maybe there's somebody out there that's really successful and uh, you just basically, now you don't want to copy verbatim, but uh, you know, if they're doing a blog on photography, maybe, and you think that's really cool and maybe they do portraits and you like to do, you know, um, outdoors, you know, landscapes you know so start your own photography website just doing something different you know in a way you're copying you like their idea you're kind of kind of seeing what they're doing but you know take it in your own direction find your own niche don't copy you know what something you know the thing about that is if somebody's doing something fairly well and especially in like a, a local area or something you don't want to copy exactly because uh, then it's just going to be too much competition and um, so anyway, you might check into that. Um, so those are kind of the 10 questions to get you started. Um, I think I had meant to, um, I think it's going to be a whole episode in itself, but what I think I'm going to do is kind of, uh, look around and think about the different things and try to come up with like 100 different ideas to get you guys started. And maybe out of those 100 different businesses, you guys will find one or two that you might want to try if these questions don't help you. So, um, if you go back to my last episode, episode number one, I talked about the 22 different ways that I made money online. And so, those were like different ways, but within those different ways, you know, there's just tons of different ideas. So there's just a multiple, you know, multitude of uh, different ways, different ideas, different things that you can do online, on a podcast, on a blog, on a video channel. And, you know, I'm going to tell you that the quickest way to make money. So the reason that you're doing this, several reasons. So Let's say you're going to this and you just want to have something to do. You just want it to be a hobby and you're not wanting to make money. Well, that's fine. You know, if you like growing tomatoes and you think you grow the best tomatoes and you just want to tell all your friends about it, start a blog, a little blog about uh, growing tomatoes. Take pictures of your tomatoes, you know, kind of document uh, from, you know, putting the seed in the ground to them growing to you cutting them up and put them in in a recipe. And that, you know, maybe that's just something, uh, just a little side thing. But if you want to make money, uh, the quickest way that you're going to make money is through advertising. So you're going to want to get a blog started. So that's why I'm telling you start tomorrow because, you know, six months from now, you want to be looking back and saying, boy, you know, if I'd started when Curtis told me to, I'd be six months along. Well, you know, I know right now we're kind of in this weird coronavirus period and it's going to be hard to make a lot of money, you know, just when you just start off. But, you know, if this thing drags out, you know, another four weeks, five weeks, you've got five weeks to at least get things going. Um, and then if anything happens down the line, you're always going to have this side gig. And so, so for a lot of people, 
they're going to want to keep their main job and use the side gig as kind of extra income. So let's say you just need an extra thousand dollars a month to, to pay for some really fun stuff that you want to do or your kids or vacations, you know, it's not going to be that hard to make a thousand dollars a month with a side gig, you know, either creating a product, flipping things, having a podcast, having, you know, a video channel. And like I say, to start a podcast blog or video channel, once you get like, you know, three episodes, three videos, um, three blog posts, you can start, I mean, literally you're at the point where you can start putting advertising on there. And in the beginning, it'll be kind of like these big networks like Google AdSense and things like that. But, uh, then you kind of, then you want to maybe go a little more local and you go to your local, um, jewelry store and car dealership and you want to say hey you know I'm doing this blog about this would you guys like to sponsor it and you know that's how you start making money and like I said that's usually the quickest way that you're going to start making money is uh, off of just flat out advertising but then as you go along uh, these things are going to turn into you're going to find other ways of making money like subscriptions um, there's a, a service called Patreon. So if you're doing a podcast and it's all free, you might want to do extra episodes where, you know, you give some extra information that that's not on just the regular ones. And and people can sign up for those on Patreon where they, you know, maybe pay you 10 bucks a month and you give them access to these special podcast episodes that not everybody gets. So there's all kinds of and we'll go through this. I'm, I don't want to throw everything at you guys at one shot you know basically i want this episode to try to motivate you guys to get started and you're gonna want to have an idea but again if you go through all these 10 questions and you still don't come up with an idea then on you know tomorrow just start typing just type your feelings on on what you feel about that's going on with uh all this you know having to stay at home and losing your job or your friends losing their job just just type your feelings out on a podcast just start talking how you feel what would be kind of cool about that is if you save those you know five years from now you'll be able to look back on them and say wow you know that's that was kind of a weird period so any a video a podcast or a blog you know some blog articles if you can't think of an idea for your side gig or your business then just talk about what's going on in the world right now and there's you know plenty of it people are scared there's a lot of weird things going on that we will never see again uh you know for generations to come stuff we hadn't seen for generations this is a you know a probably again once in a 100 year thing that people hopefully will never see again so uh, it's definitely something to talk about i mean right there that could be a uh you know, the start of some type of a podcast or a blog. So uh, I just want you guys to get started. Again, I want you to get started tomorrow. And then once you start, stay consistent. Um, you know, I'm going to throw at you real quick. Um, you know, at one point I had to do a major pivot, which was in March. Well, March of 2012, everything that I had been doing for about 10 years uh, collapse due to a algorithm change in Google. And so I had to start a new business. And so in about 2013, I started, you know, one of my ba main businesses today, which was Enid Buzz. And I didn't know if it was going to work. I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't, I had no, I just, I thought I could blog and talk about Enid and, and tell what events were coming up. And then I thought, hopefully I can get advertisers to be on my website and, and get money that way. But what happened was Facebook pages came along about the same time. So I went ahead and I had the website and I had the business directory and the sidebar ads, but I also got on Facebook pages and people really started following me there and uh, went viral really quick. And that's how Enid Buzz took off really quick in the beginning when I did that. But I didn't know where it was going to go. And so now, instead of it just being kind of a, a little blog, it's kind of turned into a media company. So it, it literally, these days, is kind of like the, the town of Enid's TV station. So a lot of news, a lot of information, a lot of lives, um, you know, on-the-spot journalism type things. And I am not a journalist, but it's more kind of in a, in a, a citizen-type journalist type of deal, community news kind of thing. Um, that's another thing. Maybe uh, certain episodes I'll teach you guys. Maybe that's the direction you want to go. If you're living in a town 
of let's say 25 to 75,000 people and you don't have a TV station and you don't already have somebody doing some type of a online media company uh, that might be a great little business for you guys, especially if you really like your town. Now, I really love my town. I grew up in it, and so it's easy for me to talk about my town and show pictures. If I show a picture of an old business, I pretty much know a lot about the business because, you know, I grew up with, with it. So anyway, uh, it's a little bit harder if you're trying to do that type of deal for a town that you haven't lived in, but, uh, you know, so that's an idea. So anyway, um, you know, I was able to pivot, uh, I was doing the cartoon logos and the Google AdSense business for 10 years. It basically collapsed overnight. I had to pivot and that's where I started Enid Buzz. But, oh, the, my point, ah, I ramble too much. The point was the reason that Enid Buzz took off and has been going for seven years now is because I stayed consistent. I mean, literally from the minute I started posting, I didn't stop, you know, so everybody knew they, they knew they could rely on Enid Buzz when they either went to the website or the Facebook page, there was going to be updated news and information there every single day. And so, I mean, I got so fanatical in the beginning because I saw this opportunity. I didn't know where Facebook pages was going to go, but um, I knew it was going to be something cool. So I literally started posting on the Enid Buzz Facebook page every 30 minutes. And I know that sounds crazy, but, uh, you know, there was, you know, there'd be like a post for the symphony, a post for the city, a post for a church, a post for a blood drive. You know, there was, there was so many things happening that I was able to. Now, I, I think I, you know, I got a couple of comments that people were a little overwhelmed because that was before the algorithms kicked in and people that liked my page were actually seeing all those posts and it was a lot of posts. So I, I cut back to posting about every hour from about 7.30 in the morning to about 8.30 at night and that's kind of where I've stayed. And folks, that's every day for seven years, even when I'm on vacation. That's what you call consistency, but it was my it's my full-time job. I consider it my full-time job. It's paid my bills for seven years. And so, um, you know, again, you know, as you as you get into these side gigs and these businesses, you know, at some point, either going into it, you're going to have to know, or as you get into it, you're going to need to know, is this going to, do I want this to be my full-time business or is this just going to be a side gig? And, uh, you know, and you can flip-flop back and forth. And so, um, you know, I've always done graphic design as kind of a side gig but, you know, I woke up one morning when I got on the Internet in 1999, and at that point I decided that I wanted cartooning to be my full-time business. I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't know how, you know, everything was going to work out. But at that point I had made the decision. Now, I didn't quit my job. Please don't go out and quit your job and start try to start a side gig. Um, you know, I, I was a full-time advertising director when I got online and started my cartoon logo business. And so what I did was once it got going and I was making a little bit, so I was working full-time when I got it going. Then as it got going, I had one daughter and I was taking her to work with me. And um, then as I started making money, I told my boss, you know, I'm going to go, you know, some, some bosses are going to be okay with it. Some aren't, but I told my boss, Hey, I'm going to only work for you you know, half the day in the, in the mornings, I'll come work for you. And then the afternoons, I'm going to go home and work. Luckily, my boss at the time was my father-in-law. So, you know, uh, sometimes we all have a step up that that was a step up I had. But then I had a second daughter and was taking both of them to work in the morning. But then I was making more and more money online. And so I was able to go to him and say, look, I'm going to quit and I will no longer be your employee but I will work from home and I will do, I will continue to do the job that I was doing and I'll just bill you hourly and you just don't have to pay me, you know, time off and vacation and insurance and I'm just, I'll be self-employed. And so that's what I did. So I highly recommend you not quitting your job to start a side gig. But, you know, here we are with a lot of people that are unemployed um, you know, you don't have a choice. So um, another benefit, you know, so right now in, in the predicament that a lot of you are in, that's one of the great reasons that you need to start a side gig is if something weird like this, and it's not, it's not going to be another virus, but you know, what's it going to be? Is it going to be a hurricane or a tornado or a, 
you know, a natural disaster that's going to crash your town and you're going to lose your job. Well, if you have a side gig going on, especially if it's 100% online and you're not selling a product, it'll net, you know, you just fire up your phone and you just keep going and you keep generating money. And so, um, you know, you're kind of recession proof, you're kind of disaster proof. So, um, plus all the freedom, you know, I'm going to, as we go through these podcasts, I'm going to give you guys thousands of reasons of why I think everybody should have a business of their own. So, um, that's probably it for now. I hope those ideas help you guys get some thoughts on getting started. I know a lot of people just already know what they're going to do, which is great. Um, you know, just, you know, thinking, you know, I'm going to be, uh, you know, a mechanic, I'm going to do show people how to work on cars, you know, by doing videos. If you already know that's what you want to do, it's going to be easy. You just fire up your phone and get after it. And then as you go along your first, second, third episodes, you're going to get better camera angles. Your can your microphone's going to get better. You know, editing is going to get better. Your, your online presence is going to get better. And so, um, you know, just go for it. You, you guys, please just go for it. If you need some help from me, some ideas, contact me on, you know, my social media. If you go to thatbuzzguy.com, there's going to be links to all my social media. Um, but get a hold of me. I'd love to hear your ideas, what you're thinking about doing. And again, there's no failure. If you start something and you get three months down the line and it doesn't work out, it's not a failure. You've learned that that's not the direction you want to go. You're going to be able to slip into another, you know, another idea. So as a reminder, you know, from what I told you at the beginning, you're going to start tomorrow. And if you're going to start a blog, you're going to go to some, and there's, you can go to Google and type in free blogging software or free blogging platforms. And you're going to find things like blogger.com and um, uh, tumblr.com. So start there, start your blog. It's going to, you know, you're going to learn how to type. You're going to get used to typing things. You're going to learn how to upload. You're going to learn what that means to upload something from your computer to the internet. And then you're going to be able to go to a web browser on a phone while you're at the grocery store and see the article that you upload. And it's going to be kind of cool. You're going to think, wow. And then maybe, you know, post a picture with that. Uh, you're going to learn how to optimize pictures because you don't want to upload really big you know, pictures, and I don't mean size, I just mean, you know, um, DPI, you want to upload the, the lightest pictures, you know, that don't take up the much space. So anyway, that stuff you're going to learn, but the only way you're going to learn it is to get started. So uh, if you're going to do a podcast, you're going to go tonight or tomorrow morning, you're going to download the app called Anchor, just like uh, Anchor on a Boat, and you're going to sign up. You're just going to put in your email and your password, and you're basically going to just hit record and you're going to start recording right into your phone, record right into your phone. You're going to have a podcast. Or if you want to go to the video route, like I said, find you some type of a stand or just set your phone up against a wall and do your video, upload that to YouTube. You're going to start a YouTube channel. And when you start the YouTube channel or a lot of these, don't worry about the name, just name it whatever, because you can always change the name. Or as you get you know, your idea refined, you can go back and start a second account that's actually the name of what you really want to do. But if you have an idea of what you're going to name, whatever you're doing, like, you know, if I knew I was going to be that buzz guy, I want you guys tonight, as soon as you get done listening to this podcast, to go to something like GoDaddy, and I want you to buy the .com and first see if it's there. And if it's there, you can go to whois.org and type in and, or you can go to GoDaddy and they'll tell you whether it's available or not. Uh, you might find that it's um, that there's not a website there, but um, so somebody may be trying to sell it. Don't pay more than 10 or 12 bucks for a domain name. Um, sometimes what people do, uh, cyber squatting, is they'll find a domain name and they'll buy it for, you know, 10 bucks. And then when somebody comes along and wants to buy it that maybe has that name or has that business, they'll try to jack up the price to 1000 or 5000 So buy, just don't buy a domain name that's already been purchased and somebody's trying to resell you know, try to find you a brand new domain name. But anyway, uh, just, you know, you might as well secure that while you can. So anyway, those are the three ways to get started tomorrow, completely free. Please listen to me, get started tomorrow. Once you get started, stay consistent. 
as you get going, it's, it's going to become a habit. As it becomes a habit, it's going to be a lot easier. I, I think you're going to be fulfilled. You're going to feel like, you know, you're going to get a month down there. You're going to get a month from today and you're going to be able to look back and you're going to be able to say, wow, I did four podcast episodes. Or you're going to be able to look back and say, you know, I did eight, uh, you know, blog posts or I did four videos and, and you know, look check out the difference between the first one and the last one. And I guarantee it just within uh, four to eight, you're going to improve. And so, and, and that's another deal is um, starting tomorrow, not really having your idea refined. You're going to get all that messy stuff out of the way. You know, all the things that you do wrong, you know, maybe you're going to do a video and forget to, you know, turn the sound up or, you know, you're, you're going to run into some kinks here and there, but get those out of the way now uh, while before you really get going. Don't worry about perfection. A lot of people worry about getting things. You know, when we started our first podcast, the 70s Buzz podcast, first couple episodes we edited, which means we went through the audio and took out the ums and the ahs and the ands. Man, we don't do that anymore. We record about an hour and within 10 minutes we have that uploaded to all of the podcasting platforms. We do not edit anymore. So, um, you know, do things on the fly, document things. Don't spend too much time worrying about perfection. People don't care. People want to be entertained or they want to be informed. They want to learn. So, uh, you know, go to TikTok and look at those. The, most of those people don't spend any time, you know, they, they spend time on the thought of, you know, maybe their dance, but as far as the video quality, they don't spend a whole lot of time on that. So don't worry about, uh, you know, perfection in the beginning, just get online. And uh, so anyway, you guys, thank you so much for checking in on this second episode, you know, podcast episode tooth. You're going to also learn as you stick with me that my favorite, my lucky number is two. So when things land on a Tuesday, the number two, the 20th to 22nd, February, things like that, I'm going to get pretty excited. So this is episode number two for that buzz guy. I appreciate you guys checking in. Hit me up on email, on Twitter, and uh, ask me all the questions that you want. And everybody have a great day. Please stay safe out there. Stay healthy. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Stay six feet from everybody and you should be fine. And we will talk to you guys soon.